Psalms 95 to 1 to 11 KJV O come. Let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms, for the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his. And he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. And to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Every manufacturer of vehicle, aircraft, engine, etc. have modeled their parts specifically for their products through customization. To the extent that other manufacturers' parts hardly fit their product, so, each time there is a need to repair or change parts, you will always revert back to the product manufacturer. Same with the God of heaven and earth who controls the affairs of all men. Did 
described above cannot be duplicated, counterfeited, alternated, replaced, faked, nor substituted. He is so supreme, so awesome, so mighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, and so on, that every attempt to change his image or perception through lies and deceit from all quarters. Bounces back in everlasting frustration. The reason the Bible says, when you hear his voice today, harden not your heart, the voice of deliverance, restoration, healing, victory, and salvation, harden not your heart. Take over this meeting. Have your way in this meeting. Speak through my mouth and give your people who received your hearts to hear your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we sow this meeting in the blood of Jesus. We come against all activities of the strangers who will see this meeting with the blood of Jesus. So Psalms 29 to 25, 7, 11 KJV give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and unto God what belongs to God. So the legacy that we are going to enthrone, we are going to deliver to the next level, to the next people coming behind us is very, very important. Worship him, honor him, serve him, reverence him, obey him, and he will bless you. Do have a peaceful weekend. AOD. How has it been moving? It's very, very important. Somebody say in the secular world, they say a good name. A good name is better than riches. A good name is better. I remember somebody who was working in the ministry government uh, institution for a long time. He worked there and when he was there, he had opportunity to give employment to several people who are coming to him for assistance or the other. Father, Daddy, I haven't got, I don't have a job. Can you please help me? We say, okay, why, what is your profession? What is this? What, what do we have? They say, oh, what, what, what can you do? If you can work within his ministry, he gives him, he gives him the opportunity, fill the form, send your resume in, and he gives several people employment. He helps several people financially, counsel-wise, everything. He was just always helping. So, Eventually, he retired from that company. He also, after some time, he died. But he had some children who also were in school when he died. One of them 
looking for a job after graduating in the school, went to a company that he didn't even know. He just applied for the for the for the job in that company. So when he got into the uh, the MD's office with his uh, CV, and his, the MD asked him, said, "Are you so so?" And so he said, "Was is your name this?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Are you related to so so?" Who was in the ministry working somewhere? He said, "That was my father." That was the end of the matter. <laughs> he said, "The employment you are looking for is considered it done. This is done deal." <laughs> Consider the employment you are looking for in this place is a don't. As a matter of fact, because that man was your father, you are going to get double salary. Because he was the one that helped me when I first came out of school. He gave me the first door of open. He opened the door for me to start a good life. Ask me, that's a good legacy. What he had sown, he didn't reap everything. His children started reaping. I'm sure his children's children also reaping. See, let me tell you another secret to this. Assuming he didn't even know the man who employed him, gave him double salary, the man did not even know. His, uh, what do you call it? Uh, his father. Assuming they did not even know each other. The spirit behind what the father had sown over the years, helping other people, that spirit will follow his children. Even where they did not even hear the name of his father, where he did not help them, that spirit will follow them. So when their children are out there, looking for one help or the other. Those who don't even, who, di don't, who didn't even know, who don't even know, not didn't only, who don't even know the Father, will go out of their way to help them because that spirit follows them. That's why the Bible says that whatever a man sows, he shall reap. What you are sowing today is your legacy for tomorrow. <laughs> you might not believe it. That's why I always cancel people. What you don't want to reap, what you don't want your children to reap, don't sow it. Because whether you wish it or not, whether you like it or not, it will come back. Whether you are alive, it will come back. Whether you are not alive, it will come back. In the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22, he said, God said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Seed, that is to sow it, and harvest, to reap it, shall not cease. Is a continuum, is a non stop, is unstoppable. Hallelujah. <laughs> So what is your legacy? A woman who had trained her children very well. Very well. Humble woman working in the civil service, so working in the civil service several years ago. And I mean several years ago. Give me a testimony. One day, she had four children. She said, her children are doing so well. Her children are doing excellently well in life. Underlined, excellently well in life. 
that he has no he has no choice but to keep fasting two or three times every week to sustain what God is doing in the children's life. They were all married, good jobs, with children, grandchildren. She was embarrassed with God, what God was doing in her life. Excellently well too. What made it possible for the children? Well-mannered, excelling in life. She gave me that. I'm, when, I'm, when I'm talking, I'm talking about, about uh, almost 20 years ago. I haven't seen the woman since that time. And I'm sure because she was aligned with God, God will continue because God is a faithful God. What had she bequeathed to the children for them to be excelling in life? we given an opportunity to witness what her end will look like after she has gone. They will continue to do excellently well if they stay the course of the trajectory where she had laid for them. Those are the good sides. Of course, you know, there are bad sides too. As recently as a few days ago, I had a man who shot his son, his son, his son, his biological child, who shot his son because he, the guy ate the last meal in the house. He shot, he killed his son. Because the guy ate the last meal in his house. They went into an altercation together. He went to pick up the gun, shot the child. So the people apprehended him, tied him, his hands to the back, tied his leg, and let him put his head on top of that dead son. Is that a legacy? It's not. Another one, somewhere in the Western world, killed his 22-year-old son because they were having an altercation <laughs> of one thing or the other. I don't want to mention the details. Between his son, 22-year-old son, he killed him. He now called his wife, said, I've just killed my son, 22-year-old son. The wife said, I hope he's still breathing. He said, no, he's dead. The wife busted out crying on the phone. What is your legacy? What are you bequeathing to those who are coming behind you? I've given you two scenarios to let you know there's a right side to it, there's also a le left side to it. There's a positive side, there's also a negative side. Whichever way, something must gel. Several years ago, when we were small children, when we were small children, I remember my father used to go to prisons, my own father, biological father, to go and preach the gospel to prisoners. And I told you this story before. One of those days when he went to preach the gospel to the prisoners while he was preaching, one young man just slapped. Uh, well, he said, no, if he had that good advice, he would be in prison with me. Years after, I was going to give him an invitation to come and preach in the correctional center. About years after my father was dead, years ago, years ago, I was given an invitation to come out to the Operation Center. It's about 500 prisoners. And I remember what my father was doing. I am not following What legacy are you leaving for those who are coming behind you? 
it is very important. If you are not on track now, you have every opportunity to trace your steps and get back on track. And begin to do things the right way. The godly way. According to God's commandments. In the book of Proverbs 22, verse 6. Let me quickly, before I come back to Matthew, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, Straighten up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Straighten that child in the way of the Lord. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. I'm already preaching. My father was preaching. My own children too have started to preach to the glory of God. Train that child. See, the beauty of training the child is this. He will give you rest at the end of your life. You are already beginning to read. You are growing old. You are not as strong as before. You won't have to be running helter skelter from one police station to the other, from one challenge or the other because of that in African child. You will be at peace. You know wherever they are, they are fulfilling the counsel of God for their lives. And they are also excellent in their endeavors. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way you when he's old, he will not depart from you. You are putting on the trajectory of the right part of him. If he goes thousands of miles away from you, you are at peace. You know you will not hear of evil report from that child or from anybody around that child. Hey, your child has been arrested. He just did this, he just did that, and he's in the police station. They're taking it. No, 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 you won't hear that. It will never happen. Because you have put him on the path of life. God's way. Let's go back to uh, book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 1. Look at what it says. I'll start from verse 1. Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which are of Jerusalem. Why do your disciples transgress the transgression tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Why do they transgress? Look at what Jesus said. But three. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For your for God for God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed man. Father or mother, let him die in death. He that forces his father or mother, let him die in death. That's the commandment of God. So no child has the authority to affront his parents, his father or mother, in terrible confrontation and say, No, I won't do it. I won't do that. I won't do it. The old child must be well trained and mannered to respect their fathers and mothers. I remember I was watching uh, a, a video of a 12 year I've said this testimony before. A 12 year old girl. This mother was, the mother, the mother was, the, her mother was calling her around the uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Hey, come and eat your breakfast so you can prepare to go to school. Come and eat your breakfast. And you know what she started doing? She started insulting, 12 year old girl, started insulting the mother. Get out, move out. I don't like you, I don't do this. What was the offense of the mother? Come and eat, take your breakfast. And she started abusing the mother. And the mother was just taking the, the video. And she even said that if the mother was not careful, she would call the police on the mother. <laughs> 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 
you can easily predict what the end of that child will look like especially when it grows into a youth absolutely rebellious but you know what the bible says it says don't spare the rod with any recalcitrant child use the rod very well on that child so that you can drive out that demonic spirit of rebellion out of that child before it becomes impossible for it to be driven out quickly wipe it out with cane with rod so that the child can fall in line and not be a problem to you or the society tomorrow that's why the bible says train up a child in the way you should go that's what jesus christ is also saying here he must die the death anyone that causes the father or the mother must die the death look at what verse 5 says but you say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me and honor not his father or his mother he shall be free look at what they are saying look at what the scribes and pharisees are saying you can note straight away that some other strange spirit was speaking through them thus have you commanded made the commandment of god of none effect by your tradition you know i wrote in my post this morning i said in my post i said the traditions and cultures of various tribal regions of the world they are 99 percent of the time anti the commandments of god 99 percent i'm not going to say 100 percent because some of them okay traditions so if you now elevate the traditions and cultures above the commandment of god what have you done you have made the commandment of god of non effect for instance look at what he said there honor thy father and thy mother but the pharisee says no if you can bring gift if you can do this and you still don't honor your father and your mother then you are okay would you that i'm talking to right now would you want your child to dishonor you i'm just asking the question you are the one that will answer your 17 year old boy insulting you his father or his mother the guy you have sacrificed a lot of your resources to train to go to school to do to do this to do that spend spend your time nurturing to come back and be insulting you and saying you are stupid you are this you are that how would you feel but the pharisees are saying it's okay as long as they bring gift i remember i saw a, 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 a somebody who was saying that one pastor was saying that the, 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 the children should honor their pastors more than their father and mother one pastor was saying that well i want to believe that he wasn't quoted right children those members of the church you honor their pastor more than their father and their mother the father who has spent years training the child the mother who has spent years training the child you pastor that came all of a sudden in a few weeks in a few days or a few years are coming to say they should honor you more than their father and mother let me tell you straight away if that is true i want to believe that that pastor must be insane must be insane must be taken to the lunatic center and examine his head would he himself as a pastor ask his own children to honor the pastor where they are going in the another church a denim kindly that. press the middle paragraph twice it will stop I'm for sure you to read wonder. after reading press once it will continue to the next page and repeat saying till you finish reading thanks but i would want to say that in various situations and circumstances 
people put their vested interest first, even a lot of times above the commandments of God. So when you hear such statements, you know it's for it's part of